Right then. So today we're going to be doing a full Cody build with all the lovely things that Cody come along with, or like watching movies and stuff. Um, but we're not going to touch on that too much because you better do this with any Cody build or just a fresh copy of Cody. It's absolutely fine. Do it however you want. Um, and we're also going to be um, installing RetroArch and um, connecting our Cody to the Internet ROM archive, which is a nice Internet archive of tons and tons of ROMs. So we're just going to be able to go and select from menus, SNES, and whichever game we want, Mario Brothers, and it's just going to quickly download that game and launch it straight away. So we don't have to go and search for ROMs one by one. It's so much easier. Right, so first of all, I'll have in the description of this video any files that you need to download. So I'll just 7-zip it. it, says go and download 7-zip if you need to. You should have 7-zip installed anyway. It's a very good zip program. Um, I'll put a link to the description of where to go and download 7-zip in case you need it. Um, right click, once you've downloaded it, just shove it on your desktop. Uh, right click and click 7-zip and extract it to system. Um, actually, you don't need to extract the system, just extract here. It's already in a folder. But just extract here, that's absolutely fine. And then we can delete this. Okay. Now, this is going to have in a lot of the stuff that we're going to need. It's very vital that you get this. Um, it's also virus check, so don't worry about that. <coughs> um, next, we're going to go and download fresh copy of Cody. So to get to this website, just Google Cody. Most people know how to do this, it's quite simple. Click downloads, go to whichever system you want. Now if you're using a different system, it's probably best to go and try and find a tutorial on them systems, unless you really know what you're doing on them systems and then you can probably work it out. So download whichever version you want. I would just use the installer 32 bit. Install it. Stick your um, shortcut whichever, wherever you want, either on your desktop. I've stuck mine here and pinned it to the taskbar. And then we've got a nice clean version of Cody. Then we need to go and get RetroArch. So Google for RetroArch. And click download and this is right download whichever um, version of windows you need and also whichever like, bit system you've got i've got 64-bit windows so i would download 64-bit if you've got 32-bit download 32-bit if you're not sure just go and download 32-bit and it'll work either way i've got 64-bit so i'm going to download the 64-bit installer <clears throat> Once it's downloaded, click on it, click next, agree to the terms. There's nothing janky in this, so it's absolutely fine. Um, click right here. It's going to install this within a folder, within a folder, within a folder, within a folder. And that's just going to be a pain in the arse when we come to set this up later on. We're going to need it in the top level folder. So, for that, when you click browse to whichever drive I want, I want it in this drive in the CD Barracuda. Um, just right click on the drive itself and click new folder. I want to call it Retro Arch. And there it is. While it's selected, make sure it is selected. Okay. There we go. Nice top level folder, easy to get to. Click next. Install DirectX runtimes and click install. And this should just whiz along. Click yes. I accept this is for the direct run terms. Here, make sure that you click unclick, install the Bing toolbar because nobody wants the fucking build Bing toolbar. <coughs> right, 
right and then click finish and yes we'll run retro arch right from here I'm going to open this into a teeny tiny so click window window scale now the only reason it's tiny for me is because I'm using a 4k display if you're using a 1080 display this will probably display fine and you won't need to do this at all but as I am I'm going to click on seven times and there we go it looks fine now um, now <clears throat> to get through these menus just use the arrow keys on your keyboard and it's enter to go into any menu and backspace to come out of it so we're going to go down to online updater click enter core updater and these are all our cores for all our emulators now this is the long-winded part of this bit of a pain but we'll get through it quite quick uh, so you just need to click enter and then down enter and then down and you need to do that for every single one of these download them all it should just be a way to just download them all but there isn't but basically this is going to make sure you're all safe so just go through each one Not that bad, really, is it? So, I'm just going to wait until that yellow bar at the bottom is finished downloading them all. <coughs> I'm going to come and press backspace and come back out. I'm going to go to update core info files, and from here down, we're going to do the same thing again. Um, we're just going to download every single one of these. We've done a lot of shaders for our emulators, and we'll just wait for that to finish. take long to be honest. Not quick. Um, oops. So I'm going to go the next one. I think I'm going to try my back. Right. Um, back to the main menu again. And the last thing before we exit, we just want to have a way to exit this while we're in Kobe. So to do that, I'm using an Xbox 360 pad. Um, PlayStation 3 pad work quite well with this, PlayStation 4 pads, whichever. Um, Xbox 360 pads are particularly good though. Um, but for now, um, click input, go to menu toggle in add combo, and enable L3 and R3. Okay, and now we can come back and put Retro Arch. Right, so next we're going to set up Cody. First of all, in the description I'll add this link. Once you go up to it, select it, and Control and C just to copy it. Saves a little time later. Um, now we're going to load up our nice fresh Cody build. And we're going to go to the settings cog, file manager, add source, and in the add source menu here, control and V, and it'll just copy it over. Now, as Cody sometimes does, it's brought some weird uh, characters over, so we need to go make sure they're deleted, and make sure it is just this. We have got HTTP colons forward slash forward slash repo dot supreme builds dot com ok um, repo name it repo click ok and backspace backspace and turn my mouse off in case it falls off um, 
Now from the main menu, go down to add-ons. Click the box icon. Install from zip file. It'll give you a little flag to tell you that you need to enable unknown sources. Settings, enable unknown sources. Yes, we do want to. Backspace. Install from zip file. Down to repo. Repository Supreme Builds zip. We'll click on that. Wait for it to finish. It'll give us a little flag telling us that it's ready. So now we're going to click install from repository. Supreme Build repository. Go down to programs. Supreme Build wizard. And click install. Now, just wait. Don't do anything else. And this will pop up. Go to dismiss. Just continue. It'll pop up again for some reason. Just click build menu. Click dismiss. Continue. Build menu. And just wait again. And it should take you out. Now, if it doesn't take you to that menu, you might bring you back to this menu. We'll just click Supreme Build Wizard and click Open and it'll bring you into here. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So it's fine though. Now we want to go to Builds. Within Builds, we want to go down to Titanium. Now, I had trouble with the Europe server before, so I'm actually just going to go on the USA server. It doesn't really matter which one you do. Your observer should be quicker, but as I said, I had trouble with it earlier on, so try this. Click Fresh Install. Now well, give it a little wait, and yes, I do want to restore. And it's going to download our little purge database. And it should install. It should at least give us the option to install. Here we go. And all this is doing now is just downloading it. A whole build. Now it's installing it. it. Doesn't take very long at all. Literally not even sped up. So as long as we don't get any errors, we should get the option to force close code now. Eventually. So we Definitely want to click force close. Do not click reload profile by any means. Fuck force close. If for any reason the code doesn't close, just Alt F4 to get it closed, or Alt Control Delete to close it from Task Manager. It should be. It should just close on its own anyway. Now next, go back into Cody and this lovely builds and ready for us to use. So, lots of things in here. Lots of nice things. Movies, TV shows. Now, if you are worried about using Cody and you're worried about having like TVs, movies, you, know, you could just not click on them. Um, or if you just want the games, I just really like this menu. You could actually use any Kobe build to do this with. I actually really like this menu. You could even go to main menu, go to skin settings, go down to home menu, and you could just delete which ones you wanted. So you could delete movies, TV shows, not even have them as an option. So nobody can click into them. Literally just have your games, which I'm going to show you how to set up now. So from main menu, I'm going to go to settings. Add-ons. I'm going to include in, install from zip file. Now, from that folder that we installed onto our desktop before, I've got pretty much everything in there ready to do this. So, we're going to click on C. We need to get our desktop so it uses whatever your username is down to desktop, and there's the system folder. Now we need to find. Repository Zach Morris 1.00. Zip. Click on this. Zach Morris add ons are installed. 
Now we need to click store from the repository and go to the very bottom, Sakamura Satellites. And we're just gonna click on video add-ons. Now, this is the old version, this is the new version. We're all gonna be doing the new version today. And click install. And there we go. That our internet archive is ready now, installed. We just need to set it up. So we go back to our main menu. And we're gonna go over to oh, still from main menu, sorry. Down to video add-ons. And find our internet archive theme launcher. Now there's two ways to get into this menu now that I'm going to get into. One of them is to hold enter and eventually it'll load up. Or if you're using a pad you can just press X on an Xbox pad and that'll bring this menu up as well. And then we're going to go down to settings and just follow along through these options that I'm about to set up. So these are all fine. Um, last page history now this is just how much the cache in the background. Um, my last press played history. I'll have it set to about 30. Um, the game just luckily that's fine. Do not download our cache size. I'm going to give it a nice healthy two gigabytes. That's plenty. Enable login. Um, right for this. We shall click enable. Or we are going to have to get a little username and password for that. But we want enable. Click OK. That's saved now. Hold enter again. Go down to settings. I'm going to go down to external launches. My system type. Windows. Um, RetroArch app location. Now this is where we installed RetroArch before. I installed it in my Seagate Barracuda. And nice top menu. Really clever. And um, go down to retroarch.exe, select that. Oh, what was it doing then? <laughs> and retroarch system folder. Again, the same place. E, down to retroarch. And it should be one called system. And just click OK. And click OK. And then back in again into settings. Netplay, I have it disabled because we're not going to be using any netplay. Um, Cody Retro Player, that's absolutely fine. Yeah, on. No, sorry. I'm going to change this to external. Um, and then we're going to execute the setup wizard. You have an archive.org account. Now, if you don't have an archive.org account, you're going to need one. So you're going to have to go here and go to archive.org, internet archive, click sign in. Um, and register for free for your little virtual library card. I do have one and I'm going to input it now, but you're not going to see that. <laughs> so, see you in a second. When you've done that and um, you've in input your password and clicked OK, a little wizard will run, and when it's completed, it'll come up with this little menu. I'm going to click OK. And that's it, our wizard's done. Now, the only, if we go into it, sorry, we'll click agree on our little terms. We we'll browse all lists. Now, the only problem with this is the Amiga is really difficult to set up and it won't work straight out the box. Near enough, everything else will work absolutely fine, but the Amiga will be in the arse. So, I'm going to do a separate video on how to get the Amiga games to work. If you're not too bothered about the Amiga though, you could literally hold enter and update visibility 
and just add name list the Amiga. And you might want to do that for um, the internet rest of Amiga as well. Again, just hold enter without update visibility and just get rid of it. If you do want it though, I'll do a separate video and when I do, I'll pop that in the description of this video so you can just follow along to that. It is a lot more difficult. But anyway, after that load of spiel, we'll go back to main menu and what we're going to do is we're going to go to skin settings and we're going to go down to home menu sorry click down click down until we've got a nice empty menu click menu item 7 and what we're going to need is our add-on and we're going to have the internet room marker where are you? there we go we're going to rename it All caps games. And right. Now we're back in this main menu. We can go to games and literally launch up our games and stuff like that. However, there is one more thing we need to do from the desktop. So that file we downloaded before in our desktop. Just open this. Nope, there we go. This system folder. Now this has got all our system files in it. If I go to CK, my barcode drive, just where I had RetroArch installed. I'm going to RetroArch and into the system folder. You can see it's nice and empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on this. Control and A to copy everything. I click copy and paste. This will copy everything over, and then you can delete that file off your desktop now because we've got all these saved here. Right then, and now what we can do is just go into whichever system we want games. Um, let's come out, um, and it'll load up, I say. If you click games anyway, it'll normally load into browse lists. I've just had it open, that's why it loaded into this so quick. Uh, and we'll go and choose one that we can have a look at. So we'll have a look at the SNES. Um, I'm playing, playing James Bond 2 there, so we won't do that. We'll choose a different one that I've not been playing. Mm, Super Donkey Kong 2? Yeah. So click launch it'll go and fetch the game it won't take very long either oh this is Japanese oh well you'll get to see that it also works with all versions as well uh, and you'll see it'll just load the game absolutely fine one thing you will want to do um, that I haven't shown you yet is double click both controllers go into this Click B to go to the main menu if you're not in the main menu. Go over to settings, and go into input, and in, in import, go down to input user one binds and user one analog to digital type. Change this by oh, don't change that. Uh, change this to left analog. And all this will do is it'll any games that only had a D-pad will now allow you to use the analog pad to control the game. And that's it, you can just press B to come back. And oh, quit RetroArch if you want. We'll actually play it, uh, have a look at a different game because Super Bomberman 2 is this Japanese? <laughs> Watch me load another Japanese game now. Oh no, USA, much better. So I'll just go and fetch the game, download it, and it'll just launch the game. And now, because I've set that, I'll be able to use the 
controller. If you do go into this menu and you just want to come out of it, just click resume and it'll go back to the game in the quick menu. If you're stuck in the quick menu and you need to get out of it, just press B to the main menu and you can click quick retro arch. Um, or you can press both controller sticks back in again, both your uh, analog sticks, and it'll reload, go reload back into the game. And there are all your little options. So, yeah, that's it really. Now, there is one other thing you could do if you really want to. No, you could just finish there, they'll all work, except for the Amiga. Uh, now there is something else I want to show you before we go, and that is on some of the systems like the PlayStation, the setup to use the software version of the um, emulator. But if you've got a graphics card in your system, then you can set it to use that and use a lot better graphics. Now, if you haven't got a graphics card in your system and you just want to use it as is, fine, just quit the video here, you're absolutely done, go and enjoy. And if you want to go and watch the Amiga video, brilliant. But if you want to find out how to use your uh, graphics card to, for your emulation, carry on. So, what we're going to do to set this up is we're going to go to PlayStation and either hold, enter or press X or square if you're on the PlayStation pad. Um, I'm going to go down to update, update launch command. And what we're going to do, we need to find the PlayStation emulator, but the hardware version. And as I say, this, there's a few different ones that have this. Um, there's Metafan uh, hardware. Yeah, I think we'll use this one. I think it works with this one. I hope it works with this one. Um, I'm going to select that. And um, we'll click yes. Update launch command. And that's just going to select that emulator instead now. And there's tons to choose from as well, so you can have a little play around if you want. So we'll go to one big list. <coughs> and we shall load something. I've got East Combat 2, do you think? Yeah, East Combat 2. Quick launch. Now, these were old CD games, so the bigger files, and some of them can be like a gigabyte, it's 346 megabytes, not too big actually. I think we chose quite a good one here. So, I'll fast forward through this, because they can take quite a while to download. software version don't mess about with it because it does work um, if we click both analog sticks in now we can get into this little quick menu if we're not in the quick menu from the main menu click quick menu and go down to options and as you'll see we are using the hardware renderer 
Uh, we can set up so anti-aliasing. Um, so we'll have some a little bit of anti-aliasing, maybe four times anti-aliasing. We can also set our internal GPU resolution um, four times. So if it was like 720p, it now be like 4K, but I think they were 640 by 480 on the original PlayStation. So this will bring it up to. Um, I'm sure it was 1080 or 1440. I can't remember. It wasn't 16 by 9, was it? So, but anyway, depending on your graphics card, you can set these. If you find that it's slowing down, set it lower. Um, I can actually set it to 16 times and it's still normal, but it kind of looks fine on four times. Other than that, don't think there's anything else you can skip the BIOS if you want. There's loads of different stuff in here that you can mess about with. You can even do like a um, set it so it's in 16 by 9 and it'll um, little widescreen hack. So we click this on and then we close this. It'll relaunch and you get a widescreen PlayStation. <laughs> Which is pretty easy actually. So that's it really. Enjoy playing your games. Um, if you've got any issues, throw me a comment in the uh, comments box. Um, or if you like the video, click like, subscribe, and we'll get some more videos up soon. As I say, we'll sort the Amiga ones out separately in another video, and we can get them going. But that's a little bit more difficult. Enjoy guys, enjoy. See you later.